here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, America, my predetermined counsel has issued your death warrant. Your appeals will be fruitless. Your remorse over the crimes that you have committed is shallow, self-serving. You only seek self-preservation to continue in your sin and debaucheries. The gallows are prepared. The executioners are in place. Your days of final preparation are at hand. There is nothing more you can say or do to persuade me in my final decision. You have played the whore for the last time. My judgment is final. Your future is fatal. And all resistance to my will is futile. To my church, listen to this, preserve your energy and resources for the coming fight of your life. Be laser focused on the kingdom. Stop trying to resurrect what I have let die. Let the dead bury the dead. Pick up your cross and follow me. Together we will make it through the darkness of days, for I am the light of the world, and in me there abideth no darkness. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message today. Hide me now behind the shadow of the cross that Jesus and Jesus alone would get all the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, may no man remember my name, nor even the name of this church, but let him always remember that name, that wonderful name, the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. In his holy name we pray. Very powerful words and sh uh, for sure. And as I've always counseled, please go back and read and pray and see what the Lord speaks to your heart in confirmation, but very strong nonetheless. And we are coming to the fight of our lives. You haven't seen anything yet for the body of Christ, for the Church of America. We are going to be in the fight of our life. You say, what does that mean? That means the fight of faith the fight of faith staying above the troubled waters that are surely going to flood the earth the troubled times the economic holocaust that's coming the wars and rumors of wars the invasion that's already happening in our borders and the invasion that's happening in every institution of our society the paganism the absolute satanic invasion that is happening in our homes ruining our marriages ruining our children's life and their purity and it's only going to increase in the coming days. And as I was praying, the Lord spoke this title. He said, called it Death Warrant. The title of this message is called Death Warrant. Now, I know it's strong on a Christmas Eve, and I know it's not full of joy, but there will be joy as you listen to the message because when you're on the right side of God, there's nothing to fear. I said, when you're on the right side of God, there's no fear. There's only faith. And when you have faith in God, you have fearless faith. You're not worried about what's happening in the world. You're not worried about what's coming down the road because you understand what the Word of God declares and decrees. So the title is Death Warrant. Now, I'm not talking about John Van Clem's, uh, what, damn, what is it, 1990 movie uh, Death Warrant. Somebody says, yeah, I've seen that movie, not that one. This is talking about somebody who's already gone to trial. They have been convicted, and the sentence has already been passed down, and now they just have a certain amount of time before the executioners call them, and they go from death row next to the, the place where they will be executed. And that's exactly where America is, and as much as we don't want to hear it, and as much as we don't like to face it, America has already gone to trial, America has already been convicted, and the sentence has already been passed down from an almighty God that we will face judgment. We're facing it already, but it's only going to increase in the coming days. And because we know that as believers, how do we live, how do we act, and what do we do? We're going to get into that as we move along. So death warning. I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, and just tell your neighbor it's going to be okay. You're, you're going to be all right. You're going you're gonna to make it. Jeremiah chapter 10. 
And the backdrop on Jeremiah chapter 10 is this, that Judah, as we have seen so many times in the parallel of America prophetically, is in deep trouble. They're in deep trouble because of their idolatry. They're in deep trouble because of their sin. They're in deep trouble because they refuse to repent and turn back to their first love. They're in deep trouble because they know to do better and they don't. They're in deep trouble because they get into a cycle of sin and they refuse to break it. Judah knows better. Judah has seen the other nations of the world fall under the power of an almighty God's judgment. They witnessed it. They witnessed the wars and the invasions. They witnessed the sicknesses and the disease and the malady malfunctions that came to the nations of the world who churned against God and churned against Israel itself. Judah knew better. Israel knew better. Just like America knows better. And we have a form of godliness here in America, but we deny the power thereof. We go to the house of God. We parade ourselves in the house of God, but we live like devils when we leave. Come on, somebody. We pray on Sunday, but party on Saturday. And then we expect God Almighty to bless us. And God says, I'm not going to bless you. I'm going to deal with you because God does not bless mess. And if you wonder why your life is in a vortex and you wonder why things ain't working out too good, the problem ain't God. The problem is you. The problem is just sin. If you wonder why America's in chaos, it has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with the human heart. The problem with the human heart is the human heart. It's full of sin. It's full of unrighteousness. And God is dealing with Judah in this manner. He's saying, I'm going to deal with you because we got a problem with your heart. And your heart has left me. It left its first love. It's left its only love. It's left righteousness. It's left holiness. And now you have a God unto yourself, and you want to do exactly what you want to do and sanctify it and call it holy. And God says, I call it trash. I call it sin. I call it debaucheries. I call it the lust of the flesh. And the Lord says, I'm a holy God, and no man shall see me unless they walk in holiness. Is anybody with me today? I'm quoting you the Bible. I'm preaching you to you the Bible, not some sermonette that I got down at the restaurant. Is anybody here? This is the word of the Lord. In America, we're in deep trouble because of our debaucheries and because of our lustfulness that we allow to open as open sewage in our lives, in our country, in our, in our schools, in our televisions, in our homes, in our minds. The devil's playground is the mind of a man. I said the devil's playground is the mind of a man. He begins to think a thought, and next thing you know, it becomes a stronghold, and he goes and does it. Does it if you know it. Does it if you don't. He does it. And then he blames everybody else for the sin that he's committed when he alone is guilty. So that's the backdrop. Are you there? I gave you time to find it. Jeremiah chapter 10. I'm just going to enjoy myself. So if you got eggnog on your mind, you keep fantasizing. I don't. Verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. You need to hear the word. Don't hear what you think you need to hear. Hear the word of the Lord. You better be careful what church you attend to. You better be careful what you watch and listen to on YouTube and other forms of media. You better hear the word of the Lord. How do you know the word of the Lord? The word of the Lord will convict you. The word of the Lord will make your baby leap inside of you. The word of the Lord will make you move in the direction towards him. Hear the word of the Lord which speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, lean not on the way of the heathen. That's that right there. We can just go to the house on that one. Lean not on the way of the heathen. In other words, why don't you just be a little different than everybody else? Say, Pastor, how come you're not traditional? We don't do this and we don't do that because I'm not going to lean on the way of the heathen. I don't need to do everything else that everybody else is doing. I need to do what God's telling me to do and do what I think feels good with God. I mean, we got so many churches that all they have is programs. All you do is you don't even know, you don't even need a calendar. All you got to do is walk into a church and you know what time of year it is. If it's a big bunny, you know what time of year it is, don't you? Come on now. 
Or, you're going to raise money for missionaries. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to have a Tupperware party. We're going to have an Avon party. We're going to have a chili bean cook-off, whatever it is, party. I mean, it's always something, isn't it? And when we do those things, and they're not bad in themselves, but when we do those things repetitively and ritual, then we lose the very cutting edge of what God is trying to say to us because we're more interested in entertaining one another rather than hearing what thus saith the Lord is and preparing for the days. The days of playing are over. I said the days of playing church and patty cake Christianity are over. Today's a day to get you a back like a T-rail and fight the good fight of faith. So he said, I want you to hear this word, Judah. I want you to hear this word, O house of Israel. Lean not on the way of the heathen. I'm not going to do like the heathen. I'm not going to act like the heathen. I'm not going to dress like the heathen. I'm not going to do anything like the heathen. And watch what he says. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. I'm not following your horoscope. I'm not following your fortune cookie. I'm not following, come on somebody, your philosophers. I'm not following your doctrines of devils. I'm not following your PhDs and all these other. I'm not going to follow the things that are outside of what the Word says. I'm not going to lean on the way of the heathens. I'm not going to lean on the, on, the, on the thoughts of what others think and well let me tell you what we believe and let me tell you what I think the scriptures mean no I want to know what the word says about it I want to know what the Holy Spirit says about it I want to know what God says about the economy I want to know what God says about world affairs and what's happening with wars and rumors of wars because I'll tell you if you listen to most of these talking heads on the television you won't know what time it is you'll think everything's party time come on now I mean it, it, if you get past all the drug commercials and every symptom you probably don't have but they make you think you have, if you, if you get past that, you end up wanting to buy a new car. Come on, somebody. And then you got a little clip telling you about what's going on overseas and that's the only bit of information you get and you don't know nothing. Because what they're telling you is not the truth. What they're telling you is not the totality. There's a whole lot of things shaking on the earth today. It's just like the Bible says. But if you get your diet off of that little bit of a clip, if that's your understanding of what's happening in this world, then everything's just wonderful. Everything's just fine, man. Rack up that credit card. Spend that money, man. Do what you got to do. Get in debt. It doesn't matter. We're going to party like it's 1999. Well, I want you to know something. 99 is done past. And that party wasn't too good, was it? And it's time to wake up from our hangover. But we're all messed up. We're all messed up because we don't know the times. So be not dismayed by the signs of heaven, for the, heaven, the heathen are dismayed at them. In other words, the heathen, they go by the stars. They go by what people say. They go by what the readings are. We don't go by that. We go by the word. We go by faith. We study, we find out, we look, we research and see what's happening. I'm not going to believe these people. Did you know that it is a, it is a law that, that, that allows propaganda to be placed into the minds and hearts of American people? It was once banned in America due to World War II, but then it got changed under Obama. And you can have propaganda. It's allowed to be placed into the minds of the people. But, no, but people, they, they don't get it because they're in a coma. They're in a diabetic coma. They're in some type of coma. No offense, somebody, but you know what I mean. I mean, sugar plum, sugar candy, sugar, 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 sugar. <laughs> just all messed up. And we just sit there and we're floating around, man. We're all in the big yellow submarine, man. Everything's just wonderful. Don't make me sing it because I know the words just floating down the road man floating down the river everything's just fine this is wonderful as long as I'm getting mine and I'm doing what I want to do it don't make no difference to me it's absolute insanity and the problem I have is the church folk that church folk just don't know what time it is just 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 have no understanding and why is your pastor always screaming why is he always hollering and he's throwing his hands up in the air and he's spitting everywhere and sweating 
Well, baby, because we're going to hell in a handbasket, and I'm trying to keep you from getting ran over by a Mack truck. I'm trying to keep you from losing your family, losing your soul, losing your life because it's coming at you as fast as you can imagine. You need to be here for New Year's Eve service. You need to hear what God has to say for the coming year because I'm going to tell you right now, there's some folks sitting here that may not be here next year. You may not be able to handle what's coming. You understand? That's harsh, but it's a reality. There will be some folks you may, that you know, family members, that this ain't going to be around. See, you don't you don't like me today because we're supposed to be you know hugging and kumbaya but you'll love me later verse 3 for the customs of the people are what vain just vain it's empty i mean i'll tell you something right now I, this this is my favorite time of the year I, I i love i love every day i mean i love all time of year you can you can catch me anytime you want i, I just love life I'm glad to be alive, I'm glad not to be in jail, and I'm glad not to be in a hospital. And I'm glad my mother-in-law couldn't make it here today. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to be alive. Is anybody here? Thank you, brother. (laughs) Uh, And all the married men said amen. Uh, I'm just grateful for life. But I love this season because of the birth of our Savior, and I love this season because I'm so grateful for what he's done. But I'm so sick of the season that the people of this planet have made it to be. I mean, I don't know about you. This Christmas, big deal. I mean, again, outside of Christ, I don't give a rip. You get me something, praise God. If you don't get me something, I'll remember it. I mean, it. It's all good. I mean, seriously, I, I would rather you take what you were going to give me and put it into your family to prepare. Go get some beanie weenies. Go buy some silver. Go buy some gold. Do something. Pay the bill you already owe from last year. Don't waste it on me. I'm, I got stuff. I'm good. I'm good, man. What, what am I going to do with more stuff? And I'm not a rich man. I'm just blessed. I'm I'm content. I have enough sheds. I have enough sheds. I have stock in Chinese stuff. I mean, you know, I'm blessed. I'm like you. <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, stuff I used to collect, I don't collect anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm collected out. I'm collected out. I don't even know what that means, but I'm just... You come to a place, you, well, you're just getting old. No, I just, I just, I'm grateful. I'm glad to be alive. You get to the point where waking up is awesome. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. I made it. <laughs> what do you want? More breath. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, you get that way. Life just becomes that way. I can only drive so many cars and trucks. Come on. Yeah, you want a sports car, but then you get a ticket. (laughs) Whatever. See, life becomes vain. It becomes empty. And the problem with the American church is we're still pursuing stuff. And we got to get out of this. We got to get out of this process. We're still pursuing politics. It amazes me how many folks are still out there pursuing 24 in politics. Give it up. I said, give it up, man. You ain't going to change this nation. You ain't going to change this world by electing some six-foot whatever. You're not. It's just not going to happen. How do you know, preacher? Because the Bible says so. That you get to a prophetic time and season where it is the PNR, the point of no return. And that's where we are. I wish it was different. Man, I wish it was. I'd love to go back to leave it the beaver kind of days, man, or my three sons or little house on the prairie. I would love that. Throw that stupid cell phone in the toilet. No, in the outhouse. I'm serious. You go to a restaurant, what's the first thing they do? They don't look at the menu. They looking at their phone. We don't talk anymore. We're like Borgs, man. We're like cyber things, whatever. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And we've lost human touch. We've lost connection. 
the connectivity is gone. Now it's just, you know, do, 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 do. and I like technology. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be old fashioned. What I'm saying is the customs that we have, a, have, have a grabbed hold of, they become vanity. And it comes a time where the church is going to have to say, look, and I'm going to tell you something. God's going to help us. He's going to help us in the coming days. You're going to see what it's like not to have power on. You're going to see what it's like when an EMP hits America. You're going to see what it's like when a nuclear strike comes. You're going to see what it's like when a neutron bomb hits. You're going to see what it's like when the invasion really kicks in. You're going to see what is going to happen. It will happen in the United States of America. It's already in progress. But most church folk are too comatose to recognize and realize this. And then when somebody like me comes preaching in the wilderness, hollering and screaming and others, they look at them like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with me. What's wrong with you? You just don't get it. And we've been living so high and so good and so long in these cotton fields, if you will, of life where everything's just so stinking fluffy that when it comes, I'm afraid for the American folk. I'm afraid for church folk because you're too soft. Come on now. All you've been around is Pastor Pillowcase. That's all you've been around, Mr. Huggy Bug. Oh, Huggy Buggy, Huggy Buggy. Everything's just Huggy Huggy. Nothing, there's no truth. You know why he's a Huggy Bug? He don't want to lose your money. He don't want to lose you. I want to hug you and love you. And, and I, I, you know, we take the support. We do what we do. But, but that ain't the reason I'm here. The reason I'm here is to preach, thus saith the Lord, to you and prepare you for what's coming. My life, my whole life has been public servant. That's my whole life. I've been a public servant. I have helped folks, and I've done what I've needed to do to rescue them, to serve them, and to help them and protect them. And I will do that to the day I go home or he comes back. That's what I do. Is that all right? For the customs of the people are vain. They're vanity. They're empty. For one cutteth out a tree of the forest, the work to the hands of the workmen with the axe. Now, here's somebody going, I told you it's about the Christmas trees, Margaret. Stop. Let me help you in just a minute. Verse 4. They deck it with silver and with gold, and they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. First of all, this was not speaking of a Christmas tree. Let me just correct those that will be writing to me in crayon. This is speaking of Ashria, which was a goddess of that time. And it was not a tree. It was the trunk of the tree. And it was designed to look like a male phallus. Do I need to interpret that? No. And it was designed for that because it was part of the god of fertility. fertility and it was... Baal's wife, if you will, Ashria. And they used it in their customs, in their worship. Talk about dancing around the pole. Folks, you're not listening to me. They were in danger of God's judgment because of their sensuality and their sexual desires that could not be controlled. They were out of control. Idolatry and sexual desires go together. And America is one of the biggest violators of this law, if you will, of righteousness. And the prophetic word and comparison today for you is that we are dealing with the same thing, Ashria, in America, the wife of Baal. Are you listening to me? Because all across America, that seems to be what makes the world go around for us. That's all we talk about. Pornography is a fever. Pornography is a cancer. Pornography is stronger than cocaine and heroin. Pornography will destroy marriages. Pornography will destroy your mind. Pornography will send you to hell, and you will burn in the lake of fire. It is not a joke. 
It is not nature and something for you to look upon as entertainment or even education, as these demons have told our children as young as elementary. Are you listening to me? It is a spirit, and the spirit of pornography is on this nation. It's in the pulpits of America. It's in the pews of America. It's in the minds of Americans. It's in the minds of humanity. Did you know that that phallus is celebrated in many countries around the world in parades and national days of celebration for it? I don't encourage you to research it. I've already done it for you. In fact, when I was in Nepal, I was appalled, if you will, when I would go through Kathmandu, and I did not know what these statues were until my tour guide told me. The name was Deepak, and I said, Deepak, what in the world is this idol here? And he said, well, that's the male organ. We worship it here in Nepal. And they're everywhere. I said, they're everywhere. And I said, what in the world is this about? He said, well, it's an idol toward Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. And I said, that's ridiculous. He said, well, that's what they believe. In fact, one morning around 5 o'clock, I was awakened out of my hotel room to the smell of marijuana and the sounds of drums. I could handle the drums, but the marijuana, I didn't know what was going on. Thought I was at Woodstock. Never been there, but thought I was there. Come to find out, I hear this rumbling in the street and look out, and there are thousands of ladies, thousands of them marching down to the temples. I said, what in the world's going on? He said, well, today is the day that they get pregnant. Today is the day they pray to the God of fertility, to Lord Shiva, and hopefully they get pregnant. Are you here today? That same spirit is on the earth today. That same spirit is in America. It doesn't have to be in what's called a stupa. It doesn't have to be in what's called an idol temple like it is in Nepal where the Hindus and the Buddhists mingle together. I've been there. I've been to uh, temple, uh, monkey temple. I've been there where they say Buddha cut his hair and the hair turned into monkeys. I've been there. It's a lie. There's monkeys there. Are you listening to me? But Americans, we do the same paganistic rituals, but because we don't do it like they do, we say we're clean. I'm going to run around this building. Well, I do it by looking at a glossy magazine or a video. I do it this way, or I run it through the reels of my mind. I, I, I don't do it like they do. No, it's the same spirit. It's the same devil. He's just an American devil. He's just dressed up like Uncle Sam. He knows how to do it. You see, the devil's had thousands of years to deceive man. He's had thousands of years to figure out man. He knows what man thinks and how he thinks and how his heart ticks, if you will. And so I gave you the illustration of being in Nepal because it was a perfect layover pattern of what is happening here in America. But because we don't see devils with horns and pitchforks, we don't believe it's bad because it's just something that I want to do. It's just something that I have an issue with. When you don't recognize and realize you're serving the same pagan gods that Judah was facing, the house of Israel, How's that for a little education today on Christmas Eve? The word Astra also means erect, and that's what this was. It was a pillar, so it was not a Christmas tree for all of those who freak out on this day. But also it led to the destruction of the Canaanites, and all the other pagan nations because they worshiped Asherah. What do you think is going to happen to America? Do you think we get a pass? Do you think God is going to wink and say, well, you know, it's America. God bless America. I'm going to overlook it. No, he will deal with America just in the same manner. If it's happening in the house of God, he will deal with it in the same manner. 
if it's happening in the congregation, the people sitting in the chairs and the pews, it's going to happen in the same manner. He will deal with you. He will deal with me. God is not a God who overlooks sin. If you don't repent, it will come to haunt you. I promise you. Verse 5, let's prove it. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs to be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. In other words, they're just dumb idols. For as much as there is none like unto the Lord, to thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in, thy, in, 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 in might. That's the way you should praise God right there. Verse 7, Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee doth it appear, or appertain for as much as among all the wise men of the nations and all their kingdom there is none like unto thee. In other words, the wise people get it. The wise men understand. The wise will seek God, and they will realize who he is among the nations of the world. It's a foolish person. It's a foolish person that will sit there and try to defy God. It's a foolish man, a foolish woman to live in her sins and use self-righteousness as a cloak, to use a church as a cloak, to use your Bible or your past experiences at an altar as a cloak. It is a foolish thing to do because one day it will be required of you to stand before an almighty God. And what will you do in that day? What will your excuse be? Only you can answer that. I don't have an excuse. I plead the blood. I don't have an excuse. I call upon the mercies of an almighty God who washed my sins away, who I made it right with just today. It's a relationship that is fresh. If you don't have that relationship today, you need to get it right. For there's none like unto thee, verse 8, but they all together brutish and foolish. Ah, I love that word brutish. That's one of my favorite words. That's, 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 a, that's a Christian cuss word. I'm going to teach it for you, right? It means stupid. So next time you're at Walmart, just say, man, don't be so brutish, bro. They'll be like, what? They'll think one thing, but you're telling them you're stupid. You're just stupid. I love God's sense of humor. I said, I love God's sense of humor. So you get all stuffy and religious, and you know you, 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 your crown gets crooked on your halo. But I'm gonna tell you, you know, on your on your on your horns there, the halo. Uh, God, God is a God of sense of humor. He loves humor. He, he's very funny. Just look at how He created you. <laughs> Think about it. Yikes. He said they're brutish. Read it again. Watch this. I love this. Verse eight. But they're all together, brutus and full. You're stupid. People get mad at me when I say it from the pulpit, but I'm just telling you, you're stupid. You're stupid to live on thin ice and think that you can just get away with God and think that there's enough grace to make it. I wouldn't play Russian roulette with God. But there's people that shuffle into the church and shuffle out, and they're on thin ice. Watching me right now, listening to me right now, you're on thin ice with God. And somehow you convince yourself everything's okay. Somehow you convince yourself you've got enough grace to make it through. But what if you don't? I wouldn't take no chance like that, baby doll. No, sir. I mean, even today in my life, I go back and I think about what I did and how I thought I got away with it. I didn't get away with nothing. That was God's grace. Because I'd have been a dead man. I'd have been in hell right now. There ain't no doubt about it. Ain't nobody could have saved me. I was lost as a goose of the snowstorm. Is anybody here? And so were you. And so are you if you're playing Russian roulette with God. We got a death warrant in our nation, folks. We are on the precipice of world war. We're on the precipice of invasion. We're on the precipice of watching the dollar crash and all the other insanity. Civil war is right here at the door. I'm not advocating it. I'm just telling you prophetically what's coming to our nation. People are done. They're done. And when they find out there's no political solution to the sin-soaked situation we're in, they're going to take up arms. Are you listening to me? 
They will. It's going to happen in our country. It's happening already in a soft form. And people are being provoked. And when you lose everything, you lose it all. And that's where the American people are because they've lost hope in the system. I'm just trying to tell the church, you better put your trust in God and don't get involved with the nonsense. You fight the good fight of faith because what are you going to resurrect? This thing's dead. Jesus is coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. He's coming back as the reigning ruling monarch of the universe. He's coming back. He's going to take a rod and iron. He's going to judge the nations of the world. Jesus is coming back. That's who I'm looking for. I don't want none of these dead beats, these politicians and whatever. They're, they're men. I'm tired of men. I'm tired of women. I, I'm tired of people. In, in, I'm t- I want Jesus. That, that's where we are, man. There, there's no answer. We're killing everybody, man. We're killing everybody. Woke up this morning, read more war news and more nations are bombing other nations. It's like a barroom fight fixing to explode. You all remember that back in the old westerns? John Wayne would get hit, and he'd fall back, and next thing you know, he hit the other guy, and then that's it. That's where we are, buddy. Beer bottles flying and chairs flying. That's where we are. We are at the precipice. Of, it's a death warrant, and people are living like ain't nothing happening. I'm sorry, I'm an alarmist. I'm an alarmist, but that's my job. I got to wake somebody up. But they're all together stupid. I love it. I, I just, that ought to be your prayer. Say, Lord, don't make me, st- help me, help me from being stupid. I prayed that before. I said, Lord, man, I've, I've, been, I've done some stupid stuff. Watch this. Silver spread in the plates is brought from Tarshish, and gold from your paths, uh, Work of the workman and the hands of the founder. Talking about using it for idol worship. Blue and purple is their clothing. They are all work of cunning men. In other words, you have all this luxury. All this luxury in your life. And you worship it. He's talking to America here now. We have all this luxury and we worship our luxury rather than worshiping God. We're more worried about our comfort how we look, how we smell, how we, how we dress, all these things rather than the pure heart of our life, which is to serve God, to serve him, to worship him, to praise him, to see people born again, to work in the kingdom. No, we're more interested in ourselves. What can I get? What more can I put in that shed? Ladies, how many more shoes do you need? Let me take off my glasses so I can see you. I mean, you, Judy's hiding. I mean, you probably have the cutest feet in the world, probably the most gorgeous feet in the world, and you need beautiful shoes. I get it. Or you might have the most gnarly-looking ones. You need to hide them. Whatever fits you, wear it. But please, for the sake of the children who are building those shoes for you and making those shoes for you in sweat factory, stop! (laughs) Purses and guys and the stuff. I mean, we just have stuff, don't we? And I'm guilty. I've told you this a hundred times. When my wife cleans out the stuff and puts it at the front door, I grab it and take it to the back door and hide it. (laughs) I might need it someday. Men, you know what I'm talking about. You might need that nut, that bolt, that screw. Who cares it's rusty and bent? I can knock it back into place. Help me now. I got enough plastic coffee jars probably to float a boat. But I might need it. (laughs) Come on, you know what I'm talking about. It's the issue of the heart. It's not having those things. It's the issue of the heart. It's the issue of I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have it. I need to go to a church. That's where we talk about. I need to go to, to, to a church where our pastor keeps score on how much he has and, and what, what part of the country club he's a, he's a member of and all these different things. No, I want to I wanted be a part of a church that talks about world missions. How many souls got saved? How many churches are we building? How many widows' houses did we build in Nigeria? What are we doing for the kingdom of God? This stuff here is all going to blow up in smoke. This is all going to go. Who cares? I mean, I'm going to do the best I can to have a nice sheep shack, put all the sheep in it, but I'm going to tell you, that's not my heart's desire. 
My heart's desire is that your life is, 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 is strong in God. And then the reflection of your life is found in your home. And people can go and say, man, there, there's godly people right there. All right, watch this. Are you still with me? Just, just give me about another two hours and you go home. Blue and purple. That was a scared laugh there, Mark. He was like, eh, I don't know about that. Blue and purple is their clothing. They're all worker cutting men. You got the best. That's royalty, by the way, if you don't know those colors. But the Lord is the true God. He is a living God. So you can have all your gold. You can have your silver. You can have your Ralph Lauren or whatever they wear, all that stuff. You can have it. But the Lord is a true God. He's a living God, an everlasting king. And at his wrath, the earth shall tremble. And the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. In other words, he's taking all this luxury. He's taking all of these things of comfort. He's taking all these things of beauty. And he says, that's nice. You know why it's nice? Because I gave it to you. You know why it's nice? Because I created it. God is the one who creates beauty. But he says, let me tell you what's going to happen. That ain't going to matter. All of that gold, all of that silver, all of that luxury, all that comfort, all that beauty, it will not stand in the day of my wrath. It will not stand in the time of my indignation. And this is the point of the death warrant mi mission and message to you today is that what we're trying to do in America is we're trying to heap up stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Babylon, just give me more. I'm Babylonian. I want more. Give me more. Give me more. And we're missing the point. And God says, when I shake this thing, it's going to crumble all around you. And if you put your trust in those things, what will be your end? What will be your fall? Will you be like Lot's wife looking back? Will you be like Lot's wife looking back and wishing you had what we used to have? Can I tell you something? We'll never go back to what America used to be. It's over. Deal with it. Settle it. Settle it. It is absolutely toast. And you say, well, you had no hope. No, I didn't say anything about individuals. I believe for individuals. But if I'm going to try to bring a corporation back, if you will, if I'm going to bring it, that's not what I'm after. I'm after souls of men. I'm after fathers loving their wives or their children and their family, loving each other and husbands being faithful and wives being faithful. I, I'm, I'm after the family union. I'm after all those things that are pure and holy before God. I'm not after the politics of this nation. It's been turned over to the evil one. Well, you got to try something. Go ahead. But I'm just telling you, don't waste your resources and your energy on something that God has let die. And don't get mad at me. You do it. Go ahead. Verse 11. Thus shall you say unto them, The gods have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under the, the, these heavens. God says, I'm going to destroy it all. I'm going to take down your gods. I'm going to take down your paganism. He hath made the earth by his power, and he hath established the world by his what? Wisdom. And hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. He did it all. Man, think about that for just a second. God did it all. Why, why, are we, why, are we, why are we worship in the pagan way? Why are we worship in life and the American dream, man? God did it all. If God did it all and we live in the land that we've lived in and we've enjoyed it, can you imagine what heaven's going to be like? Woo! It's going to be beautiful. Don't miss it for nobody. Don't miss it for that bottle. Don't miss it for that drug. Don't miss it for that woman, that man. It ain't worth it. I said it ain't worth it because life is but a vapor. Man, you're here one minute and you're gone. Think about those we've lost this year. Think about it for a minute. They're gone. No longer to be here. That's, a, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? See, man doesn't think that way. Man thinks I have forever. 
I have a 401k. I've got a retirement. I've got to pay off this house. I've got to do this. I've got to plant. I've got to build. I've got to go on. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And God says, there's coming a day where I'll require all of it from you. You don't know that day. And you sit here and you think you do know, but you don't know. You don't know what lays around that corner from this building. You don't know. I don't know. But I do know if I put my trust and my hope in my God, I ain't got to worry about what's around that corner. Because the love of my God is standing there for me. Well, what if you go home? Bye. Check you later, baby. Don't write me because I won't write back. Huh? Man, that's so callous. Well, what you going to do with life? How are you going to look at life? How are you going gonna to try to hold on to it, kicking and screaming? Or are you just going to say, Lord, my life and times are in your hands. I'm good. I'm real good. You want to wear this stupid jacket? Come get it. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, 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 fearless faith says I'm not worried about I'm not worried about death. I'm not worried about life. I'm not worried about demons. I'm not worried about angels. I'm not worried about nothing. What can separate me from the love of God? Nothing. You can't separate me. So why am I worried about you? Watch this. I'm not going anywhere, so just, just hang on. He's made the earth by his power, verse 12. He established the world by his wisdom. He has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Verse 13, when he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, and he maketh lightnings with rain. That's pretty powerful. Lord, we need rain here. And bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish. I want to say, hey, look at stupid next to you, but I'm going to do it. Look at stupid next to you. Every man. My wife's favorite statement, she'll come home from work and say, is everybody dumb? <laughs> she works in the corporate world and deals with big corporate things, you know. And she's like, they're just dumb. They're overpaid dummies. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we got a lot of underpaid dummies too. <laughs> every man is stupid in his knowledge, and every founder is confounded by the graven image. He's talking about worshipers of the pagan, paganistic things. When you begin to seek after the things of the world, you're stupid. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them what life is there in the life we live and the pursuits thereof let's watch this before we go we'll get out of here in just a minute but what life is there what 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 can that car do for you well yeah the car gets you to and fro and you had to have that car and you paid way too much for it and you're paying too much for it and if you bought a real fancy one when it breaks down you're paying a lot way too much for it I know I've owned foreign cars before. I remember one time I owned a, I had a BMW and I went in there and I said, I need some, I need some plug cables, spark plug cables. The guy said, $300. I said, I'll take the generic. He said, we don't sell generic for BMW, son. These are Bosch. Is anybody here? I sold the car. <laughs> I sold the car. I said, that's stupid. I was looking for a $12.99, you know soldered together ones no I don't work like that you pay for what you get but what life is in it in other words he's saying you have all of these things that are vanity and they give you no life the, I'm coming to the play, place in my own personal life where things that don't give me life don't matter to me please understand me I'm grateful for what I have, and I, I take care of what I have. I'm responsible for what I have, but I recognize and realize that doesn't give me life. And so my pursuits are changing to where I want to just pursue life. Come on now. But in America, and especially in the churches, we pursue things that think they give us life, and they don't give us life. They give us misery. Come on. We buy stuff. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. You get it and it breaks. 
you get it or you didn't like it or you get it and it has a chink on it or something I mean I, you know if I buy a new car I park way down the 40 man I mean I'm all, you go to Walmart you find me way down there I don't want nobody hitting my car and she's like why do you do that I said I don't want nobody hitting the car and they hit it anyways how granny can push the cart from <laughs> from there to there I don't know she did it you understand and then you get upset about it you know on and on it goes and we have become full of vanity and I'm telling you through this message today God is trying to whip wake the church up and if you will whip us up into shape to say quit focusing on these things and focus on life which is him life more abundantly which is Christ and his kingdom and eternal life and the life of others I'm going to tell you, be more satisfied when you do something for others. It, I have so much joy when I got that picture today from Cuba. And they're today, on this day, they're still giving out stuff that we brought in, that you brought in, those that are watching, those that are here. Doesn't that turn your crank? That turns my crank, man. I'm like, yeah, go, dudes, go. Give it out in the name of Jesus. See, that seed, that life is moving even while we're standing here even while we're sitting here that's powerful the seed of God is powerful you need to learn how to sow it instead of trying to hold on to it but did you see that there holding on to things has no has no life in them verse 15 they are vanity or they're empty and they're the work of errors in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. In other words, when God invades, when God visits, when God inhabits, and God does what he's going to do with judgment, it is going to perish. I tell folks all the time, and they, they look at me so cross-eyed, but I say, when you die, they're going to throw you in a box, and that's it. And most of your clothes are going to end up at the Salvation Army or Goodwill. They may rip off the britches you're wearing. I don't know what your family's going to do. Church, help me. I preach all kinds of funerals, and I've seen stuff. I saw one guy that threw a hammer in the, in the coffin with him. Like, what's he going to do with a hammer? <laughs> I'm here to help, Lord. <laughs> Are you here? And all kinds of stuff, you, you don't take it with you. But everything you do in your body, everything you do for Christ, everything you do in your life is recorded. God sees it. He knows it. And if it's sinful, it's exposed as you go to hell. If you're washed in the blood of the Lamb and it's forgiven, it's never known again. But the works that you did for Him, they're known forever. And you're blessed and you're rewarded according to that. Oh, that's fairy tale. Believe what you want to believe. I believe the Word of the Lord. You know what? If I get to heaven and it's muddy streets and all I'm going to live in is a cardboard shack, as long as Jesus is there, you can have all the rest. I'm not looking for the streets of gold. I'm not looking for the entrapments. Those are just part of the blessings. I want to see the one who died for me, who could love me as rotten as I was and as rotten as I can be. And you too. Isn't that beautiful? But I'm going to tell you, the American church has lost this. We've lost this grasp of our Christianity. We've lost this great gift on this Christmas season. We've lost it. And therefore, there's a death warrant. There is a death warrant. We've been tried, we've been convicted, and the executioners are coming. Let me finish with this. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Gather up the wares out of the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. What is he telling them? He said, get ready, get your stuff packed up because you're fixing to leave. And it ain't the way you want to leave. It's called invasion. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once and will distress them that they may they find it so. In other words, God says, I'm bringing judgment. I'm bringing judgment to Jerusalem. I'm bringing judgment to Judah because of the sin. 
because of the worship of sexuality and idolatry and sensuality and all the stuff that we are so lustful for. Woe is me for my hurt. Jeremiah begins to say, my wound is grievous, but I said truly this is a grief that I must bear it. You might want to underline that. Jeremiah's praying, he's recognizing and he's interceding, and he is finding himself in the same position of Judah. He feels their pain, and he says, I'm going to have to bear this thing. What's coming to America and coming to the world, we're going to have to bear it. Do you think that the war is going to stay in Ukraine, in the Russian borders, in the Middle East? Do you really think that? Do you really think it's not coming to us? If you think that we're going to just slide and do what we want to do, you are mistaken. And it is my job as a pastor, as a watchman, as a shepherd, as a friend, to warn you, to get your house in order. Get your life right with God. If you say you're a believer, give your life to Christ fully. Don't play around with God because you don't know the time of your death. You do not know the time of your next breath. You don't know if you'll be in a coma tomorrow. You say, you're trying to scare me. No, I'm giving you reality. You don't know. Your life is but a vapor. You have no control over how your heart beats. You have no control over blood clots and these different things. Things that are inside you eternal, you have no control over. But God does. And God don't want no man to die and want no man to perish. But don't play with God. We have a death warrant on this nation, and and we need to do all that we can to help warn people of what's coming down the road. 2024 is going to be a very, very dangerous year. I hope you come back on New Year's Eve to hear about that. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're listening to me today. None of this was designed to scare anybody but to bring us to a stark reality that no man, no man is promised tomorrow. Today could be your last day. You need to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, not just in word, but you need to know him in your heart. If you don't know him, make him Lord today. If you're backslidden today and this message has convicted you, come on, let's get right with God. It's not that hard. Just turn. That's all you got to do. The Holy Spirit will help you turn the rest of the way. Just make that effort towards him. Father, we love you. Thank you for this message. Jesus, thank you for the great, great gift that you are as we celebrate your birth. We love you so much, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody, I love you. Please have a great, great birthday party tomorrow, and enjoy one another. I love you.